going on, everybody? Welcome to the Vikings Now by Chat Sports. We have a loaded show for you guys today as the first topic we're going to be talking about. Should the Vikings consider trading for legend wide receiver Adam Thielen? And then we're going to be talking about Jalen Naylor as we are getting reports that the Vikings coaching staff wants him to step up as a wide receiver three heading into camp. And then also Lewis Seen. We've touched about this a couple times here on the show, but... I just think it's looking more and more likely that he does get cut and pro football talk had a cool quote that we'll get to on the second half of today's show. But I want to get the fun started by doing this. So I want you guys to get down in the comment section and name a favorite random Vikings player that you can think of. So not the Adrian Petersons, not the Randy Mosses, you know, none of the big time names, no Chris Carters, but maybe give me a name of a player that made you fall in love with the Minnesota Vikings. For me, I'll say Sidney Rice uh, back when he was linked up with Brett Favre in 2009. It was one of the most fun seasons I've ever had watching the Vikings. And that was a big reason why I am the fan I am today. So I want you guys to get down below. Name your favorite random Vikings player um, of all time. Curious to see what you guys have to say. Obviously, I'm a younger Vikings fan, so I'm really curious to see like, you know, some of you older fans who you guys uh, give me uh, or who you guys say down in the comments section. But let's talk about it. Let's chop it up about Adam Thielen as this was one of his – you know, greatest catches of all time. I'll never forget back of the end zone, one-handed over uh, the Cowboys. And, you know, Adam Thielen, shockingly enough, he had a pretty damn good year last year for the Carolina Panthers. Like, I thought he was going to fall off and just absolutely hit a clip and then just kind of be a nobody in the NFL. You know, I thought he kind of chased the bag a little too much when he signed with Carolina. But, I mean, he had over 100 receptions. He had over 1,000 yards. He had four touchdowns. And that was with a rookie quarterback and a terrible, 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 terrible Carolina Panthers offense but even though three years before that definition of consistency always stayed healthy the least amount of games he played over the last four seasons was 13 always been uh always been a really solid guy in the red zone as well that was kind of his calling card in the tail half of his career with Minnesota was him being that red zone threat so the trade idea I cooked up and maybe you're saying this is too much for Thielen but I think you're gonna have to give at least a you know a little bit of draft capital to land the aging wide receiver, but hey, I had the Vikings give up a six-round pick in 26 and a 2027 seventh-round pick. Maybe saying this is too much for Thielen, but you know I still think with the Panthers having a you know a young quarterback, they're going to want to keep the vet wide receiver around. So give him a little extra ammunition, uh, not to. But overall, my take on trading for Adam Thielen, like you know we can keep this off the field here for a little bit, but it would be awesome. Like it would be truly, truly awesome. Like my heart would be warm. You know, just watching number 19 run out of U.S. Bank Stadium yet again as, you know, he was one of my favorite Vikings players of all time. He has truly one of the coolest stories in all of sports. Going to a D2 college, then having to pay the Vikings to even attempt the tryout for the football team, worked his way up, somehow made the 53-man roster, had a couple huge special teams plays. Then that kind of led him to turn himself into one of the best wide receivers in the National Football League. And his career with the Vikings is insane. Like, over 530 receptions, just under 7,000 yards. The fact that Adam Thielen, a D2 wide receiver, almost accumulated 7,000 yards throughout his playing career with Minnesota, you know, is fantastic. But he had 55 touchdowns, averaged around 50 yards per game. Never was this big-time deep threat, but he still was able to put up 12.5 yards per catch. And, listen, the wide receiver uh, room right now, you know, we've put a lot of attention on this, you know, third spot for a reason. But could you imagine if the big three is Jefferson, Addison, and Thielen? Like, the amount of separation you would create between those three would be unreal. Um, but then you still got guys like Jalen Naylor, and we'll talk about him a little bit more uh, in about two minutes. But, you know, you got Brandon Powell, and then you got, like, guys like Trent Sherfield. He could be battling it out. And then you got the Jackson, you know, bros. So, like, you got a bunch of names you could throw in there at wide receiver three. But why not Adam Thielen? Like, if this is the trade that goes down, I understand. Let me actually just double check here. Like, I understand his contract is the, you know, maybe, yes, he's getting paid a little too much for his production and his age as he is going to make, you know, around, let me just double check this real quick about how much he's going to be making next year. So, actually, he's only going to be making, um, or he's going to have a cap hit around $10 million, but the Vikings have uh, $26 million still to spend in free agency, so they can kind of bite the bullet on Thielen. But you guys let me know, would you accept this deal? Give me an A for accept or give me a D for decline down in the comments section. Maybe if you're a Panthers fan coming across this show, would this be enough to get the deal done for Mr. Adam Thielen? You guys let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. A sixth and a seventh to bring back one of the best wide receivers in Vikings history. 
talk about Jalen Naylor now. Is you know the wide receiver three topic. It's a big topic around Vikings media. And you know Jalen Naylor's been my guy to win this position. And you know he's actually got the support of the Vikings coaching staff as well. This is what Kevin O'Connell had to say about the third or fourth year or yeah third year wide receiver out of Michigan State. He says Jalen has always been a guy that when he's healthy and on the field, he shows up every single opportunity he's gotten. That's our challenge to him. Sometimes things are out of your control, and we understand that. But for him to take that next step, we're going to need to see him out there a lot as a part of that group. And listen, I'm a believer in Jalen Naylor, just straight up. Like, I am a big fan of his game. I think he's a super silky route runner, smooth getting in and out of routes. And, you know, go you go throw on some of his tape with the Michigan uh, State Spartans. Like, he was fantastic, man. Like, you know, obviously that offense didn't ask him to do a lot, um, you know, in terms of being like a big-time player where he's going for like over 1,500 yards or more of a run first, you know, uh, offense when he was there, but he would still be able to be, or he was still able to be incredibly effective. So I'm a believer in Jalen Naylor. I think he could excel at that wide receiver, uh, wide receiver three spot. And ESPN also said this uh, regarding the Vikings, you know, being a believer in him. And, you know, they said sometimes the most notable personnel moves are the ones teams do not make. Well, there's nothing stopping the Vikings from acquiring a veteran number three receiver between now and the start of the season. It's worth exploring why they did not immediately replace K.J. Osborne when he did sign with the New England Patriots in free agency. And, you know, when I read that, like, the Vikings clearly believe in what they have. They still have $26 million in cap space to spend during free agency on this year's books. They could bring in a guy like Michael Thomas, a guy like Hunter Renfro, who we'll talk about on tomorrow's show as options at that wide receiver three. But clearly Minnesota has a belief in the guys they have, and I don't think it's a bad thing whatsoever. I would roll out, you know, I would go into camp, have a three-man battle of Sherfield, Powell, and Naylor, and just see, you know, who will win that out heading into week one. But you guys let me know, predict it for me, who will be the wide receiver three for the Vikings this upcoming season. You know, wishful thinking here on my end. I hope it's Jalen Naylor, but I think more likely than not, it's going to be Brandon Powell rolled out there with Jefferson and Addison. Now, let's talk about Lewis Seen in just a second, but first off, we're going to tell you guys about a sweet deal we have going on right now and where you guys can land your J.J. McCarthy jerseys today or, frankly, any Vikings jersey by just clicking this link, chatsports.com slash Vikings jersey. Make sure you guys get hooked up. You're not going to be want to lack, or you're not going to want to lack at US Bank Stadium with your uh, Vikings merch. So go ahead, get a jersey today. He's going to be rocking the number nine on sale right now. Chatsports.com slash Vikings jersey. Get hooked up today. All right, now we've talked about Lewis Seen a couple times here, and you know I've been in the camp where I've said he is more likely than not going to get cut, and you know just even the more reports we get, like it is really leaning that direction. Actually, Pro Football Talk wrote up an article talking about the former first-round safety, and this is what he, they had to say. They said, it just hasn't worked out for Seen in Minnesota. He was barely playing at the start of his rookie year before, this, uh, before he suffered a compound fracture in his leg in week four that caused him to miss the rest of the season. In his second season, he played only seven games, almost exclusively on special teams. If Seen makes the team, it may mostly be because of his $1.7 million salary is guaranteed. And cutting him doesn't save the Vikings any salary cap space. The Vikings are picking up their best players, though it doesn't look like Seen will be one of the 53. And, you know, I agree. I definitely could see a situation where the Vikings keep five, six safeties, or five, six safeties, which obviously they could. That is a lot, you know, how much Flores values that position. But even now with Najee Thompson being in that group, like he is definitely going to be on the outside looking in. And his career with the Vikings, not much to work with. I mean, only 10 defensive snaps. Like, we don't even know what Lewis Seen is. That's why I kind of get upset when people are just like, oh, Seen's a bust. We need to move off him. You don't know that. Like, he has not played, only has one tackle, got over 100 special team snaps, and he's only active in three games in 2023. Think about that. But take a look at this group right now. You know, you got the big three of Bynum, Smith, and Metellus. They're for sure making the team. And then I think Theo Jackson is a lock. And then you got Najee Thompson, who apparently is working out with the safety, so that's five. And then you're going to keep Jay Ward or Lewisine. You're probably going to keep Jay Ward. So that's a situation where you keep six safeties and Seen is on the outside looking in. That's why I just can't really see a clear path for him making this roster. And I overall feel for him. Like, you know, being a first-round pick, being a part of that, you know, elite Georgia defense, like he was probably thinking he was going to step in and be the, you know, the player that carries on Harrison Smith's legacy here in Minnesota. But you know, him just not being the best scheme fit with Brian Flores as he wasn't there when the Vikings did draft him. Like, 
I just really do feel bad for seeing. I mean, obviously you can't control the injuries and all of that. So, you know, it's just one of those situations, man. It's just one of those things where, you know, you hope he is able to, you know, somehow work his way to this 53, man. And you never want to hope injury on somebody. But, you know, let's just say one of those big three safeties the Vikings have does get injured. Then Scene can step in and hopefully play high-level football and, you know, live up to that first-round pick. So, you know, overall, I feel for Scene. But let me know what you guys would do. Would you cut Lewis Scene? Give me a K for cut or give me a K or give me a C for cut or give me a K for keep. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. I would keep them um, if I'm making the call. But again, like I don't necessarily know how that is possible if we're looking how this 53 man roster is going to shake out. As always, guys, you guys can give me a follow on Twitter right there. That's the handle at Pat Seeps. Uh, I'll give you guys a follow back, of course, if you guys do do so. But just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, the show's over the past week. The support's been unreal. So seriously, thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys next time. Let's go, Vikes.